Okay, welcome to the Newton's Laws of Motion review video. Um, just going to briefly go over some of the major points of Newton's Laws. Um, obviously, this picture of Newton. Um, I like this picture down here because it basically wraps up all three laws of motion in, in one thing, uh, in one picture. Uh, the truck hit the pole. Um, object was moving, constant speed came to abrupt stop or, or quick stop if you will and as it did that the boat that was following it uh, added on the trailer did not stop moving and continue to move on right so uh, the action uh, that's first law you know if you think about um, second law force is equal to mass times acceleration um, he had to hit this with enough force to accelerate this large mass up here so he was that means he was going pretty fast he was probably going at least 60 miles an hour I would say because that's a large mass and in order to have that mass accelerate that far on top of the truck um, means he had to be accelerating a good bit additionally you have Newton's third law reflected in the action reaction um, he hits the pole uh, he st stops moving this way as a result of hitting the pole uh, the boat goes flying up so uh, the truck stops and then instead of moving this way boom the boat continues to move on so as a result of that action let's go ahead and review newton's first law um, basically object at rest remains at rest uh, unless you move unless you put some kind of force on it um, bumper cars don't move unless you apply some kind of force to it um, anything doesn't move. You leave a lock, rock sitting somewhere forever, and it will continue to sit there forever unless you apply some kind of force to it. Um, additionally, object moving at constant speed uh, will continue to do so unless it's acted on by and by a force. Uh, the motorcycle is going and going and going, and then all of a sudden, boom! It, it hits the tires, uh, which were the unbalanced force. Right? It's a lot of um, friction, if you will. Uh, hits this, opposes the motion of the uh, motorcycle. As a result of that, that opposing motion, uh, the force is unbalanced. As a result of the unbalancing of the force, the motorcycle goes flying through the air. Um, additionally, you see it over here at the crash test dummy. Um, smash into the wall. Truck stops. SUV stops. The dummy inside will continue on forward. Uh, it's oftentimes referred to as the law of inertia, and uh, Galileo, if you remember from the Khan Academy videos, um, Galileo was the um, first guy that came up with this about 100 years before Newton, so he's, Newton is not the original um, thinker behind it. However, Newton explained it in a more thorough way. Uh, what is inertia? Um, basically... Objects that have mass don't really want to move. Um, objects with more mass don't want to move at all. Objects with low amounts of mass, objects with high amount of mass like the car don't want to move easily. Objects with low amounts of mass um, do want to move easily because um, they do not have a lot of inertia. So inertia is directly related to one major property that being mass now uh, I think I probably advanced that too quick it's hard to start something moving when it has large mass or a lot of inertia it's additionally hard to stop something that has a lot of inertia uh, it takes more force to stop it if it uh, once it's in motion it takes way bigger brakes to stop the car than it does the, um, the bike here Newton's second law, um, acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied. That's a book definition. The real definition, and you know, that I guess is really the real definition, but the summarized definition is how fast something moves, right? Acceleration of an object. How fast something moves is dependent upon how heavy it is and how much force is applied to it. Again, it comes back to force. Um, 
applying if you apply more force it will accelerate more these are basic duh things in science that you've known for a long time if you push something harder it will move faster if it is really heavy you have to push it really hard to make it move that's exactly what Newton's second law says <clears throat> looking at it in a visual sense I mean it just makes a ton of sense to me when I when I think of the shopping cart or, or the buggy if you will we've all push these things so I mean use things in your life experiences that you can relate to uh, I'm sure you've had to push the cart or the buggy around uh, for your mom or dad uh, when you first get it it's, it's empty and you can wheel that thing around like anything right it's very easy it doesn't have a high mass has very low inertia um, if you load down your shopping cart probably not using pumpkins but um, whatever you're going to load it down with, it has more mass. It takes more force. This man is obviously pushing with a lot of force to get this thing to move. So this, again, does science. You know that. You just didn't know it was a science law. Newton's second law is why trains are very slow to start. Yes, trains will move, and trains can move fast, but it takes a lot of force to make them move fast. They have this whole big old thing right here called the engine, duh, and it is huge, and it is has tremendous amount of horsepower, or basically thrust, that will provide a lot of force. Inversely, motorcycles can go very, very fast because they're really small. They have a lot of um, force can be generated from the little engine, um, and it's small mass. You combine... A lot of force plus small mass, what does it do? It accelerates fast. That's exactly what F equals MA says, right? So if you increase the force, decrease the mass, it will go fast. Inversely, this is like with the um, motorcycle, right? Motorcycle has a lot of force, um, low mass, acceleration is high. Inversely, the train is high mass, um, takes a lot of force, to make it accelerate. It does not accelerate very fast because it has a high mass. So they're proportional. If one is high, the other one's low. Doesn't mean you can't move something big fast, because you can. You can move an airplane really fast. It just takes more force. So it's just a matter of uh, numbers, right? Speaking of numbers, um, this is how you calculate Newton's second law. F equals m times a or m ma. It's oftentimes just referred to as ma. Well, uh, I'm not going to get into calculating every single problem for you. Uh, you can substitute the values in here. Uh, notice the question here, what's the acceleration of a 6 kilogram object being pushed with 18 Newton force? In this case, you're looking for acceleration, so fill in your variables. 18 Newtons is the force. 18 equals 6 kilograms times A. So you got to isolate that A, divide the 6 kilograms out on both sides to uh, get rid of that mass. 18 divided by 6. The acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. Why is it meters per second squared? Because of acceleration. Acceleration is always measured with the meters per second squared unit. Force is always measured with the Newtons. Um, aptly named after Isaac Newton. He did not name it that, but um, it was later named after him. He just called it units of force or something like that, I believe. Mass is going to be expressed in kilograms, uh, 9 times out of 10. I'd say 99 times out of 100. Um, but it can be expressed in grams, as long as it's in the gram um, system. Not going to go over every one of these problems. You're welcome to stop the video and review. I will pause slightly so you can easily pause uh, the video and, and review them. You will have to do problems like this on your unit test. Little chart set up to show you how easy it really is to calculate it if you understand, right? F equals M times A. Um, if you have the M, you need the A to get the F, right? So 2 times, you know, A equals 10. In this case, the A is 5, 5 meters per second squared. Please don't forget units. Uh, as I've told you already, if you leave units off in the test, uh, half the problem will be wrong.
not I'm not um, evaluating your ability to mul multiply. I'm evaluating your ability to understand um, the variables involved in the calculations of Newton's law. All right, I'm going to go ahead and advance. Go ahead and advance again. I think it's a great idea to stop the video and answer the questions. That's your decision. I think you should do it, but you've probably already done it in class. As far as weight, I'm not really going to talk about it too much here. Uh, I did mention it in class. Uh, weight is a force, so it can be uh, calculated with F equals MA. It's an interesting question. Ian has a mass of 58 kilograms. What is his weight? Well, weight is the force, so it would be the F. F equals MA. 58 kilograms, obviously the mass, right? 9.8 is the acceleration due to gravity. So there's your acceleration. So um, weight or force is equal to weight is a force, remember, not mass. Um, Weight is equal to 58 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. It's somewhere in the order of the 500s, just doing mental math. 58 times almost 10 is 580. So it's going to be a little bit less than 580, probably like 560. I'll skip over this problem. And now we're on to Newton's third law. It's oftentimes referred to as the law of action-reaction. I'm sure you've heard this before. I know you've seen this in school before. Um, whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. Very easily seen with a balloon. Balloons are such a great example because uh, you blow up the balloon with air, so you're therefore providing it with force or thrust. Balloons work just like rockets do, or space shuttle, right? Remember the video in class, the space shuttle. Um, as you let go of the, the end of the balloon, air will evacuate out of the balloon. As it evacuates out, I love this, uh, this diagram because it shows those kind of little molecules. As the molecules of air evacuate out, it propels the balloon forward. You've done this before. It's fun, but... You probably, again, never knew why, what really caused it to do it. Um, the lady on the skateboard here, um, she pushes against the wall. Person pushes this way, wall pushes back. So can you actually push the wall in a little bit? Yeah, technically you do. It's probably an immeasurable amount, but um, technically matter moves. So, you know, I know you think a brick wall is really, really hard and dense, and it is, but technically molecules will move and so forth. Um, but how hard you push on this is how hard the wall pushes you back. What does that react to? Reacts to how far you go rolling up. You can do it easily, or you can, or you can push with a lot of force and go way far up. Again, pictures. It's all about the pictures. I mean, with me, anyway. That's just the way I think about things. I love the rabbit. <clears throat> See, the rabbit here springs this way. Right? He springs his feet against the ground and pushes. As a result of him pushing against the ground this way, I'll stop. Sorry about that. As a, as a result of him pushing against the ground this way, and I mean, to the left, he propels himself forward. You walk the exact same way. You just don't think about it. You push off of the ground backwards, right? You push opposite to the way that you're going to walk. All right, you have action-reaction here. Man swings the bat. The ball is evidence that action reaction is occurring. If he hits it, of course. If he hits it, what happens? As a result of him swinging the bat, the ball changes position. 
that is direct reaction from the swing of the bat. The ball's not going to go that way if uh, he misses it. If he gets a strike, it's not going to go that way. That's, that's evidence that, you know, there's an action and a reaction. Space shuttle is my favorite. I mean, I like space in general, and that kind of stuff interests me. However, it is by far the best example of Newton's third law of motion. That and the balloon. The balloon is basically the same. I like the balloon idea because as the air, par air particles go out, the balloon goes up. Right? And as you know, the balloon goes every which way. But the space shuttle is designed off of Newton's third law. Um, as it blasts tremendous amounts of fuel, hydrogen and oxygen combine chemically to make this reaction go off. Um, as it combines this fuel, it pr produces this tremendous amount of thrust downward. And it's shooting it down to the ground. As a result of shooting so much thrust down into the ground, it launches itself into the air at tremendous speeds. Momentum I talked about briefly in class. Um, this can be, can be calculated as well. Product of an object's mass and velocity. Um, object has large momentum if the product of its mass and velocity is large. For instance, a fast-moving train has both a large mass and a large velocity. It therefore has a large momentum. Momentum is the ability to stop, if you will. Um, it's very hard for a um, train to stop on, on tracks because it has such a large mass. <coughs> Couple that with an increase in velocity and you're, you're in dangerous territory. It's the reason they make the um, the gates come down over the road. They are unable to stop for cars like that in short distances. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and move on past this. So briefly, in review, Newton's first law of motion, action reaction. I'm sorry, that's not action reaction. I apologize. Newton's first law is um, object in motion remains in motion. Um, the bicycle or the bicycle, the motorcycle didn't remain in motion. It stopped abruptly or quickly. But the man on the motorcycle kept moving because he was not he did not get hit by the tires. So he went flying straight over. Newton's second law, the train. F equals MA. What's it really mean? It really means it takes a tremendous amount of force to move something with a large mass fast. That's what it means. It can be moved. And it can move fast. It just takes a tremendous amount of force. And Newton's third law, there's my spaceship again. It's not really my spaceship. but Thrust down. As a result, it goes flying up. Best example ever. All right, I do believe that's all of it. Yeah, we'll get into this next week. So, all right, I hope that helps. Um, that's Newton's Laws in review, all three of them. That's about three days of notes. Obviously, this is a review video, not a, um, this is not everything. We're going to be doing other things in class, including labs and, and uh, calculating some problems to, you know, reinforce his ideas. So, hope it helps, and um, I'll see you in class.